I just love everything about this airport right from the approach to getting there. And the stunning statue of Kempe Gowda welcoming travelers as they visit this garden city. Wow, this is surreal. Floating gardens. I think this is the best homage to Bengaluru being a garden city. You can actually feel the temperature drop by a few degrees as you walk past this vertical garden and you see that waterfall out there. These are actually antiques that have been loaned by the Department of Archaeology. So when you come here to T2, allow yourself enough time, especially if it's your first visit, because you may want to stop every once in a while and take some selfies. Hi folks, hope you're doing well. On my way to the airport and this time around, for the first time I'm flying out from T2. The new terminal at Bengaluru airport has been open for a while. But in all the flights that I've taken since then, I've never had the opportunity to actually use T2 because most of the airlines that I've taken or that I normally choose to take don't operate from T2. So today is one of those days that I'm taking an airline that I typically don't fly on much. This is Air India Express and I'm on my way to Kochi. And uh, they operate from T2. So I am really looking forward to visiting Terminal 2 and seeing what it's all about. So ever since Terminal 2 opened, there's been a fair bit of coverage on it. I think uh, it comes across certainly as a very striking airport in terms of the design, in terms of the architectural elements that have been used. And of course, it's also generated like any uh, huge project will. It's also generated a fair bit of reactions from many who love it and there are some who find it a bit perplexing. But I'm definitely looking forward to flying out from T2 this morning. So I thought I'd take the camera along and uh, film a bit vlog style and share it with you. Those of you who follow my work already know that I'm a big fan of uh, Bengaluru Airport. So I'm sure that uh, Terminal 2, I've not seen it yet, I've only seen it in the pictures. I'm sure going to be quite a game changer. And I think it's going to elevate the status of Bengaluru Airport even more. I just love everything about this airport right from the approach to getting there. And the stunning statue of Kempe Gowda, welcoming travellers as they visit this garden city. This is our first time coming here, so therefore we are also a little unsure, but the signage is pretty good. This is that architectural element that has been most talked about. This certainly looks quite stunning. Ah, there's actually plants in there. Are they live plants? Not sure if they are, how do they water them? Probably some sort of drip irrigation. I don't think there's any airport where you can actually see the planes take off. Even the earlier terminal you couldn't do that, but out here you can. Wow, this is surreal. I love the floating gardens. I think this is the best homage to Bengaluru being a garden city. So that's the engineered bamboo that's been much talked about. I think there were some comments on how strong it is. Well, engineered bamboo is very, very strong. Entry into the airport was quite quick. There's not too many people in the check-in counters as well, so I'm sure check-in even will be very smooth. So that's one of the advantages of T2 also, is that there are not too many airlines flying out of here, at least for the moment. So I think it's a lot smoother, a lot easier. 
Air India counter, they hardly had any people and I thought it's the same line but uh, no, this is the Air India Express. I think plenty of people flying Air India Express I suppose. I guess that way we spend more time in this terminal. Our flight's only at 11 so we still have a good two hours before we board. Just wanted to get in a little early and uh, get a sense of what this new terminal is all about. I think that engineered bamboo roof and these floating gardens have to be the most striking part of this terminal. You can actually feel the temperature drop by a few degrees as you walk past this vertical garden and you see that waterfall out there. Well, it's a good thing that they have a waterfall behind to uh, cool things down because uh, the security, especially if you're carrying tons of camera, equipment, laptop, etc. It's still a bit of a ordeal. I wish there was technology where they can actually just scan what's in your bag without you having to open things up. So I think despite all the modernization that happens, I guess some things don't change. But anyways, we have that waterfall there, just to calm nerves. Whoever has done the landscaping for this has really spent a lot of time. What's interesting about this airport is as you move from one zone to the next, there's something that grabs hold of your attention. Whether it was the floating gardens in the pre-security area or the cascading waterfall here, just as you clear security or then the vertical gardens here and then there's some uh, sculptures too. These are actually antiques that have been loaned by the Department of Archaeology. I'm sure the arrival experience too must be something similar. So, as you come into Bengaluru, you're greeted by the plants. Bengaluru, of course, is a garden city. And then also a bit of history, a bit of culture in uh, some of these sculptures that you see out here. So, I'm flying to Kochi with uh, Varun. So, many of the videos that you see in the recent past, most of them have been shot by Varun. So we are hoping to capture some interesting episodes out there in Kochi for you guys to savor. Like the airport? Yeah. Huh? Incredible, no? It's a good start. Good start to our Kochi trip. I was reading somewhere that this terminal is the size of 47 football fields. And of course, this is where the retail, the FNB, and all begins. Namaskara. Tim Hortons, Namaskara. I to thank you. Nortira. Wolfgang Puck, Kitchen and Bar. Some big international names in the food space. Oh, he's got a to go as well, like a deli. I haven't seen a Wolfgang Puck to go in any of the international airports. This is the first time? This is the first one in India. And uh, the second one is uh, opening in the international side of the back door airport. Fantastic. That of course is the legend, Wolfgang Puck. Well, they certainly have some of the big names in the food and beverage space. Be interesting to see how they do eventually. So you new airport and look at the new airport. It's a lot of It's a Business is Okay. But it's 50-50. First terminal 1 to terminal 2. Gradually grow. Grow as more flights come and take off from here. James Martin Kitchen says proper British food. Hello, how are you? All good. What do you mean by proper British food? Huh. So it has a bit of uh, Indian food, chicken, huh. masala, rice. Ah, okay. It's basically with the immigrants who have gone there. 
So that's the sort of food that you do. You're the exec chef. Yeah, I'm the exec chef, and thank you for all your videos that you do. Thank you. I just shifted to Bangalore three months back, and I see your videos in Host Kote and the da, Donne Biryani. Donne Biryani. So. Did you try it? I did. I did. Okay. That's the reason I said thank you for all your videos. Good luck. Thank you so much, sir. And of course, no points for guessing which is the most packed eatery, Maya's restaurant. You can have all the international brands, but you know that heart is desi. We want that filter coffee kick. We want a little bit of that bisi bisi idli, that vade with that sambar chutney. Coffee sick, boda. Menu, menu nearly sumar bagheer beko. Maya's breakfast combos. Madhra, I am doing fasting. Nadi thay thay. You want to eat something? Idli vada. Idli vada. Nange new coffee kori. Maya's pure filter coffee. Maya's pure filter coffee is bisi idli, solpa strong, sakre kami. I think the moment you walk into one of these traditional places, you don't even need to eat something. Just the whiff of the air, laden with the aromas of the tuppa, you can smell a bit of the udina vade. I think that's enough to fill your tummy. I'm fasting currently, so I'm just having some coffee. Varun, your uh, idli vade looks very good. Eh? Today, I'll shoot you for a change. Give me all those expressions. How is it? Is the idli soft? Yeah, it's very soft. The chutney it is quite spicy. Though. So a lot of times I get asked if my cinematographers eat. Well, they do eat. Uh, and you know, here's something that you probably didn't know. So when the food comes to me and I'm before I eat it, I'm actually filming the food. They're filming the food. And so therefore, my grouse against these guys is they take far too long. To film the food sometimes because they want to get that shot. Because if they don't get the shot, then I'm disappointed because I don't have enough B-rolls. But in the course of doing so, the food sometimes cools a bit. But once they finished filming me and once I finished eating, when these guys sit down to eat, usually the food's piping hot. So actually, they should be the ones doing the review because they get the food at the optimal temperature. So Maya's again is one of those few places that doesn't do a chicory mix in their coffee. It's pure coffee. Just a strand that I like. Doesn't even need any of the sugar. Still a few more uh, eateries that are going to open, like Jones the Grocer. There are so many of these uh, high-end sort of brands. I hope they do well eventually. In terms of Indian, I've seen uh, there's Gully Kitchen and then there's Maya's. So perhaps there could be a little more representation across regional cuisines of India. At least, I'm sure Maya has the South covered and uh, from a vegetarian aspect, perhaps a little more representation for our regional cuisine. Well, that was uh, a nice idli vade, although probably the most expensive idli vade coffee that I've tasted in recent times for 600 odd rupees. I think 500 odd rupees for idli vade and two coffees. But I guess that's the rent that they need to cover. All set to board our first flight from T2 and the Air India Express at that. I don't remember the last time I flew Air India, but the flight's on time, so. It's always a good sign. So when you come here to T2, allow yourself enough time, especially if it's your first visit, because you may want to stop every once in a while and take some selfies. And also there's plenty to keep you engaged, food-wise and shopping-wise as well. So that's it for this vlog from Terminal 2, Kempe Gouda International Airport. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it useful. If you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing because uh, there's plenty of stuff that we do here. We do food, we do some travel, we do motor vlogs and some of life's adventures in general. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one.